you know, good afternoon or good evening in case, you know, you are after six, in the time zone after six. So this is a chapter, chapter eight on handling, or as you will see, trying to cope, right, with uh, missing data. And I believe for the group, I really feel that you are not, you know, it's, it's not a foreign uh, discussion when you are dealing with a data set that has some, you know, some missing values, right? Uh, in the real world, that's very, that's very common because, you know, not, nothing works uh, perfectly. So in this chapter, what we're going to do is try to understand um, uh, different types of missing data that is good to, that is good to know. Uh, then also uh, understand some of the nature and severity of missing data. And you will see that this is more like a case by case uh, uh, dilemma in terms that uh, maybe your data set has, you know, a, a good amount of observation, the rows, right? And what you are dealing with sometimes is uh, certain points where there's some missing data that you can you can you can you can uh, deal with them. Others, there's there's a small number of observations, and there's a lot of you know missing holes, right? So that takes another kind of another approach. Then, uh, one of the things that you are going to see is that uh, missing data to get a little bit more of the relevance, and how is it affecting you know the whole picture? of your data set, uh, we need to perform visualization. And that is something that is very, um, is kind of mandatory, okay? Because then we can see the patterns in terms of if some variable is associated with some missing data on another variable, all right? And then we're going to discuss, uh, the book doesn't go in detail this chapter is going to detail about how to deal with uh, missing data, but I have a, a short demo, okay, that uh, I think we have time uh, to do it using a random forest to, uh, you know, to impute, to impute uh, continuous, uh, continuous missing data, okay? But some of the methods, of course, are, you know, uh, the you know the hack method right the, the deletion method <laughs> and then the imputation okay so everyone with me any comments there on the objectives and how we're going to approach this uh, uh, this chapter okay all right so uh, the chapter talks about types of missing data right and uh, the authors mention three uh, common mechanisms that you're going to find in almost any data set that has this, uh, this situation. Uh, the first one is what is called the structural deficiency. So in other words, uh, you have a data set that for some reason, some variables are missing data, okay? And you want to know what is the cause of them. An example is the, the famous uh, Ames uh, data set. Uh, if you have taken the tidy models uh, book club, I think you should be uh, aware of this data set. It's a collection of uh, you know of uh, different uh, housing uh, uh, house sales in Ames, Iowa, in the you know in the in the in the county of Ames, Iowa, from you know a period of time. And this data set is very good to learn a little more about linear regression, multicollinearity, and all that. But it, it, it presents us with the, you know, this situation that it has a lot of missing data. So one of the things that we have to you know, practice to deal with uh, missing data is first try to understand how the data was collected. Okay, that will give you a very good insight of how to deal, of what is the significance of those missing values. For example, let me show you, I think I have it here, okay? Let me show you the, what is called the data dictionary or data documentation from that particular data set, the Ames data set, okay? 
Okay, can you see it? And let me put it a little bit bigger. Okay. Okay. So in this data documentation they, or, or a data dictionary, what you're going to find is an explanation of each of the variables of that data set. And for example, if it is a categorical data set, it will tell you, you know, the labels, the categories, but also sometimes it will give you some insight on what is the significance or how you, you should interpret those missing values. The, the example that the author gives is this one, the alley the alley variable, which is a nominal variable. So for example, a house could have an alley, okay? Uh, here, uh, the variable is telling us what type of alley access is to the property. If it is paved, if it is gravel, you know, basically, uh, you know, stone grind, or very important, the NA means that there's no alley access, okay? so. Instead of trying to figure out what is that NA, you know, before reading this, if you go through this, through the, especially this data set, then you will find that there is some significance in terms of there is no alley in this particular, you know, observation. So one of the things that you can do is right off the bat, uh, fill that NA with, let's say, no alley or none. Okay, and that's perfectly... Uh, you know, it's, it's perfectly in line with what they're telling you. Uh, other uh, examples, for example, uh, it mentions if the house has um, uh, a, a basement, okay? Some of the houses that we can find in, in, every, in every country, uh, some have basements or, or not, and most of them don't have basements. So in this one, the NA on that particular variable means that the NA uh, has, the house has no basement. And it gives you some information about it, okay? So one of the things that you should always do, you know, to check your, 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 your missing data definition is go to the source, okay? Uh, research that collection of that data set and see if the, he has a data dictionary. If he has it, then probably it will mention why uh, that value is, is missing, okay? So that's the first thing. Then the other one is what is called the random occurrences, okay? And this one, we're going to see in the next slide that it has, uh, it qualifies as a mechanism of, of M card. In other words, missing completely at random. Uh, usually in the real world, this doesn't happen, okay? Those missing values usually are not random. Uh, probably you will see in the academia, right? You will see that uh, they uh, incorporate some missing data, you know, to make a, you know to make an experiment or make a point. Then you can you can test, you know, if they're, if they're random or not. But usually in the real world, uh, that's very uh, rare that it occurs. So random occurrences take it with a grain of salt. Then there are some specific causes, right? In other words. There's an explanation of why that missing data is there. And there are two. It's called uh, missing at random or missing not at random. And I'll explain what they mean. Okay, so let's go to the next slide and see what are we talking about those MCAR, MR, MAR, and MNAR. Okay, the, let me move this. Okay, so. In the MCAR, as I uh, as I explained before, those missing values are, you know, they have a random pattern. In other words, they don't depend on any other factor of, of the data. And the example that I, I gather is this one. Uh, imagine a weather, a weather sensor, okay? That is measuring temperature and is sending data to a database. Okay, you know, it's a, a IoT, uh, an internet, uh, uh, in, 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 in internet uh, device. Uh, there are some missing entries in the da database for when the sensor broke down. So because there's a randomness in terms of the sensor breaking down, 
this could be a random pattern, but you have to you have you have to study it. And the good thing is that there is a statistical test uh, to see if you're missing this in your data set. Uh, you can assume that it's random or not, and it's and it's, it's called the M card test. Okay, and this is the package that uh, gives you that functionality, the Nanio package. Uh, by the way, uh, it, it's a very good package. Uh, you know, to build with uh, missing data, you know, in detail, it has all the ggplot um, uh, commands, you know, to study different. And, you know, I'll show you a couple of them. Okay, so, but the, the unfortunate thing is that when you are dealing with uh, with a real world data set and you have missing values in, in your variables, usually that, that won't be the case. Okay, I, I wish it was, but it, it, it isn't. And one of the implications of the MCAR uh, mechanism is that you can, you know, uh, you can delete those uh, missing observations without introducing any bias uh, to your data set. Why? Because they're random. Okay. So in fact, you are extracting some noise from the data set. In other words, it's, you know, is you, you, you're doing a, a good thing, <laughs> uh, you know, extracting that, but usually that doesn't happen. Okay, the other two, these are the important one, is missing at random, okay? Where the locations of missing values in the data set depend on some other observed data. And you're going to have, you know, uh, in the book, they mentioned an example of how this happens. So for example, uh, let's take the same weather uh, sensor, right? Uh, so there's some missing uh, temperature values in that data, data set for, uh, when the sensor was switched off for maintenance, okay? So we can see that because of the preventing maintenance that they're doing to the sensor or a scheduled maintenance that they're doing, that then they're going to turn off the sensor. And, you know, from that period, there's going to be an, any, an, any data uh, recorded, okay? So you can attribute that with as something that is happening to the sensor that you can then measure it because you can measure when is the sensor maintained and when it's not maintained, okay? You can have a schedule of the maintenance, right? Like a flag of the maintenance and then you can have and then, okay, that would explain. It. And we have to see how we can deal with it. If it's MR, different from the MCAR, right? In the MCAR, we can delete, we're not going to do, introduce any bias. When it's MR, MAR, then you cannot delete it, okay? Because then you are introducing some bias to your data set. And one of the things that you have to do then is try to think ways to impute, you know, to fill the gaps, right? Impute those values. Then the one that is kind of uh, confusing is this one. <laughs> Missing not a random, MNAR. And this one is happens when the missing values in the data set depend on the missing values themselves. Okay, so let's see how you know we, we can interpret that. Let's take that same weather sensor, okay, our ultra weather sensor. It says when it's extremely cold, the weather sensor freezes and stops working. Okay, in other words, you know, it has an operational limit that if it goes below that temperature, it's going to stop working. So when it happens, it's not going to record any of those temperatures, which are very low. In other words, it's going to just give you, you know, or it's not going to give any data or it's going to give you a low point, right? Thus, the locations of missing values in the temperature variable depend on the values of the variable themselves, okay? And um, for example, also this happens with surveys. Uh, it's, very, it's a very common thing with surveys. Uh, you know about the thing about the age that sometimes, you know, uh, persons, I'm not talking about genders here, uh, persons of certain age don't like to put their actual age, right? Or they don't have to put anything there. So you can see in the surveys that some group of people they're going to not they're not going to give you information about their age okay 
In the other groups, that's not a problem. But in certain groups, there could be some uh, uh, proclivity, right? To uh, uh, not, not tell the information, okay? So that's another example of MNAR. It depends on the variable it, it, it itself, okay? And of course, with MNAR, also you have to impute. You cannot delete. The only, the only one that you can delete some data, you know, theoretically, is the MCAR. Okay, so if you have done some deletions, you know, watch out. <laughs> okay, so uh, here, and I'm going to, you know, play, play the video, but just to show you, this one is taken from uh, statistical rethinking. Okay, it's a Bayesian statistic uh, course. And this, you know, uh, uh, video, this is chapter 20 of, the, of that statistical, statistical rethinking book. And this video combines the, the, the theoretical foundations of Bayesian statistics applied to missing data, okay? And I just to show you, uh, you know, one of the, uh, how, how, we, how the author introduces this, this thing. So for example, missing data, he says there are missing values that are commonplace. They happen, you know, very, very often. Usual approach, complete case analysis. And this comes, this comes from R, right? There's a complete case function that what it does is that it subsets the data set with all the rows that they don't have any missing, any missing values. In other words, you are deleting uh, data there. In other words, drop all cases with any missing values, okay? The problem with this is that if you are not following the MCAR mechanism, if the data set is not MCAR, you're introducing bias. And you're also discarding a lot of valuable information. So what are the alternatives? The alternatives would be to replace the missing values with mean of column. And what is this that's there in big bold uh, letters? Never do this, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Never do this, and we'll see why. Uh, when you are replacing a value with a mean or a median or the mode, you're introducing bias to that variable. In other words, you know, you are introducing like a spike, okay? And if you have 50% of your data in that variable that are missing, you are introducing 50% of the same values in that data. So you're going to have a big spike if you do a histogram or a density plot. But he goes in detail and he says, you know, why you shouldn't do this? Then there's other more advanced techniques, more refined techniques like multiple imputation, Okay, and we're going to you know do a demo of that you know with uh, with random forest. Then there's Bayesian imputation, very important, and he explains to it. And there there are others. So two things here. Okay, in other words, be careful deleting your data. Uh, I mean, it, it's situational. If you have a data set of millions of, of rows, and you have a variable that only have five missing values, come on, you know, you're not going to do anything imputing, you know, introducing any significant bias to that data. But if your data set is kind of a thousand rows and you have a variable that has 20% missing values, you are taking 20% off right off the bat, okay? And if it doesn't follow the MCAR mechanism, then you are distorting the, the, the data set, the information of the data set itself, okay? Any questions so far? Okay, one more thing about the video, and you know, I encourage you to, to you know, to 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 spend some time here because he introduces the missing data, uh, you know, situation. He does it with a funny, you know, humor humor uh, thing. In terms of have you have you ever, uh, you know, where you're a student, right? Have you ever said to your to your teacher, hey, you know, my dog ate my homework. <laughs> Okay, you know, in other words, you know, you didn't do it, <laughs> didn't do it. So that's one of the classic uh, excuses for students, you know, not to hand their word, hey, my dog or whatever, you know, my, <laughs> my, my, my snake or, you know, whoever pet, you know, whichever, whichever pet you have. So he introduces this uh, humor uh, excuse to explain more about what are the mechanisms of the, of the data set. In other words, you know, in missing complete at random, you can, you can see that the dog doesn't assist, okay? So, you know, this just, you know, it's just, it's just a random. You're, you, you are, you know, 
you know, uh, pulling it from, uh, you know, from, from, from his leaf, right? Then there are other situations where there's missing at random and there's, you know, uh, missing not at random. Okay, so it's a very interesting explanation of what we have uh, discussed already. Okay, and the lecture is by the author himself, uh, Richard McElwith. Okay, so very good. He has all the, you know, all the, all the chapters are explained by him. They are in YouTube. Very good. All right, so let's talk about how we can detect the missing data mechanism and how we can, you know, we can deal with it. So I had this chart, which is very useful in terms of once you detect that there's some missing values in your data set, what are the two usually remedies that you can apply to your data set? Well, there are the deletions. And remember the deletions, MCAR. If it's not MCAR, uh, you are deleting uh, uh, data that is going to bias your data set. Remember that. And also, you are also uh, taking out file information. So be careful with this. Be careful with this one, deletions. The other one, which is the, the approach that we should take is imputations. And remembering in the AIMS data set that you have to do some research on the, on the source, the collection of the data set. Well, you're going to do the imputation, but it could, you are going to do it with the knowledge gain from that research, okay? So for example, in the Ali case, if you're imputing that NA with a non-value, you are, you, you are doing an imputation. The only thing that you know, you know uh, a priori, what is the imputation value is about because of the data dictionary. Sometimes you cannot do it. For example, in the same data set, there's a lot frontage uh, a variable that basically you don't know the value. Of it, so you have to do some more advanced imputation in that one to try to get a reasonable, right, a reasonable uh, prediction on the value of those missing values. So in the imputations, we have general and we have advanced. In the general, we have the imputations by the mean, imputations by the median, and imputations by the mode. In the mode, usually it's applied to categorical variables. The, the the mean and the mean, of course, is for continuous. And what we're doing is just collecting the data that you have, calculating a mean, and then filling uh, every every single missing value in that variable with that mean. Remember, this is the problem is that this is to introduces bias, but depends on how many observations do you have really. Okay, if you have a million and only have five, well, you know, probably is 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 not bad. It's not it's not that bad. Uh, to do a median or, 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 or a mean. The, the bias is going to be very, very small. But if you have a, a, a thousand and you have 20%, then definitely you're introducing some spikes there. In time series data sets, uh, they have other mechanisms for imputation. For example, you can forward fill uh, your missing values. For example, if the missing value is a particular T date, then the T minus one that is not missing, then it's going to be forwarded. It's going to be filled by that value. You can also do the backfill. In other words, instead of forward, doing backwards. And also you can do linear interpolation. So in the time series, you know, you can you have uh, a, a couple of uh, good mechanisms there that you can you can try. Then in the advance, you have the KNAN, the K nearest neighborhood neighbors, and also the mice. The mice is uh, multiple imputation change equations. The demo that we are, we're going to see using random forest uh, uses this technique, okay? You know, chain, chain equations. So in other words, it's taking the whole data set to try to input, you know, different di different values at a certain, at a, you know, uh, you know one, one after one after the other, okay? That, that's the, the chain, the change part of it. Um, if you are working with tidy models, uh, you have KNN uh, imputation, you have median, you have mold, and all the non, non the general ones. And also you have bagging. And the bagging is also a random force uh, uh, version of, uh, of, the, of, the, of the imputation. Okay. All right. 
So let's continue. All right, so in this uh, chapter, visualizing the missing information, uh, the data set that the authors uh, chose, and I believe we've seen it before in, the, in other chapters, is the SCAT uh, data set. The SCAT data set, it gives you uh, different species, uh, animal species, and you have to predict the animal species by the droppings, okay? And you have a lot of data you know, from the droppings of each particular uh, species. So this is basically the a glimpse of the of the variables. Um, this is also a skim. Uh, I use a lot this this function skimmer from the skimmer skim r uh, skim because it gives me uh, right off the bat it gives me the complete rate and the number of missing values and also uh, it gives me not it's not showing here but it gives me also the total observations. So I can get a a first look at how many missing values do I have? And for example, in this one, we have taper, right? With 17 uh, uh, and, and, and missing uh, the diameter and what is something called a TI, okay? And this is the complete rate. In other words, uh, if you, you know, uh, subtract one, you can you are going to get then the the missing missing rate uh, uh, percentage, okay? So here we have around five six percent, and then here you have a little bit more, okay? So uh, the first thing that you have to do is try to visualize your 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 missing data. Try to get a, a landscape of what it is. So from then uh, this uh, this that package is this uh, function we divide the data set between the types of data that you have. If you have uh, categorical factors, uh, inter integers, uh, numeric, and of course the DNAs. And as you can see, the NAs are kind of clump, right? And, are, and, and go across uh, some, you know, so, some variables. In other words, they're not unique. So you can see that, for example, diameter, taper and TI, they have a relationship in terms of when the missing data is occurring, okay? And also we can check maybe if, if the data, missing data is associated with a species in particular or not, okay? Then for another view, and this comes from the Data Explorer uh, package, okay, which is another, you know, helper for doing this uh, visualization and spot or analysis, we have what is called the plant missing. And here, as you can see, we don't have any percentages, right? We, ju we just ha have the occurrences of the, you know, different observations with the variables. Here, we get the percentage and we get it in order. In other words, we get from the ones that are complete to the ones that have the most percentage in missing variables. And as you can see, TI and taper, the ones that have 17 up there, they are the ones with the biggest percentage, 15 and 15.45. And even it gives you, uh, you know, like a rating of, you know, how good or how bad is the missing rate. Usually after 40% in this, in this package, it will give you that, you know, probably, you know, it, 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 you, you, could, you could do some removals. Okay, but be careful with that one. Then going back to the this that uh, another uh, visualization. Now we have the percentages again, and here you know the the missing values get a little bit uh, you know they are they are kind of you know not easy to to visualize here because it's a black and white uh, background you know a gray background and a black. Now you can see clearly that diameter taper and t and definitely when. When one occurs, missing value, the other ones also are, are missing. And that's very important, in other words, to, you know, you impute a strategy, okay? Okay, this one is also from the Nanier uh, package, and it's called what is called the offset plot. The offset plot, what it tries to do, especially for missing values, but you can see it in other, you know, in other uh, situations. But for missing values, what it's going to do is that is going to try to give you a picture of the relationships of missing values between those variables. 
we're only taking the missing values only, okay? You know, because they're complete, you know, we, we're, we're not going to uh, bother with them. So here in 10 rows, okay, we have taper and TI that have missing values in 10 of them, you know, conjointly, right? In six of them, we have diameter, taper, and TI. So it already is informing us that those variables are kind of associated in their missingness, okay? Then there are two instances, two rows where these ones are, you know, are, are together, are missing together, and then one that has the taper, the TI, and another, another one. But this is, for me, this is the most, you know, value information that you can get a reasonable picture of how your missing data variables are related to each other. Okay. So uh, let's test, let's do a test to see if this data set is a M car or not. And this is a, what is called a chi square uh, uh, test, similar to the ones that we do when we want to see between categorical variables, we want to see if there's a relationship or not. It's similar. But the thing is that now we're taking the missingness. In other words, it's going to transform that data set internally into missing and non-missing, and then try to see if there's any pattern between that variable that is missing and the other variables. Okay? In a, you know, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a whole, of course. And Similar to the chi-square, uh, the test is that the, the data set is m car is random, okay? So if you have a p-value that is very, very low, like this one, okay? If you are a value that is very, very low, that means that you cannot assume that that, that this data set is, is, uh, is uh, the missingness is, is random, okay? Uh, but very simple. Very simple uh, approach, and I remember that this was introduced about a year ago in the in the in the Nanier uh, the Nanier package. Okay, let me let me put it here to get you Nanier package. So it's in the log. Um, yeah, uh, the M car. Uh, was introducing other libraries, other packages, but they were not updated. So eventually that test, you know, uh, has some issues. Then the author from the Nanier rescued the, you know, the script, and then, you know, he updated it to the, to the Nanier. So now, now it's fairly, you know, fair, fairly usable. You know, it doesn't explode. Okay. So now that we know that the SCAD is not, uh, Missing at random, right? Uh, sorry, missing completely at random and car because there's a missing at random thing. Yeah, you, you can get kind of confused sometimes. These uh, things. Okay. So in this section, what we're going to explore is pairwise relationships between predictors. Okay. So the first thing we're still in the SCAT data set. The first thing that the author presents us is. Let's try to uh, study the relationship between diameter of the dropping and its mass. And remember, the mass and also the, with a flat indicator, the mass and flat indicator, they are complete, okay? The one that has missing, the missingness is the diameter. Keep that in mind, okay? So this is the scatter plot that they you know, show us. And this one is very interesting because the flat indicator, which is the purples, are the ones that are that, that they don't have any flatness, right? Or the or the or the green ones that have the flatness in terms of the missingness. In terms of the missingness, you see that the flats when it's yes, okay, uh, there's no uh, you know it, it corresponds to me to missing values. In other words, the ones that are no, they are complete, okay. So apparently there's a relationship between the flat indicator, right? If the dropping is flat or not, the flat indicator and the missingness in diameter. So we can use that information to try to see with other information, try to see if we can input that, 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 you know, that, that variable. 
Okay. So for example, what I did, you know, try to get a little more insight about this graph. What I did was try to create a diameter column that gives me gives me when the the value is there, in other words, it's not missing, gives me a zero. And then when the value is missing, gives me a one. In other words, an indicator of that missingness. That's what I call it a flat NA. And what I did was then take that variable of that missingness, the zeros and one, zeros means complete, one missing, and then do a correlation. And guess what? When I do the correlation with the flat, with the flat indicator, the correlation is one. So they are perfectly aligned. In other words, when the flat is yes, that means that the diameter is going to be missing. When the flat is no, there's going to be a value there. Okay, so they are in intricately related. And of course, that means that other variables that are related to diameter and missingness are, are also going to be related to that. Okay. Uh, this one, it was my... Uh, Kind of my contribution there, <laughs> you know. You're going to see it in the in the in the in the book, okay? Okay. So let's go to the Chicago ridership, okay? Our our train ridership data, and here what we're going to do is try to see if there's a pattern of the stations of the red line, the L uh, L line in Chicago. If there's a relationship between the stations and the missing and, and some missing information that we have in the ridership. Okay, so here's the data set. We're stripping the, the date here. Okay, only rides only. Okay, let's go here. We do the skim. I always do the skim just to get an idea of what I'm dealing with. And I can see that, for example, in some stations, there are 30 missing values. In other words, in those particular dates, uh, there was no writers, writers are uh, recorded, you know, total writers recorded. Okay. Also, there's some pretty, uh, you know, pretty uh, 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 significant. Uh, there's one that it has 2,780, which is pretty, pretty significant, about half of it is missing. Okay, and keep on, keep on. There's 30, 30, 30s, and then there are others that go even, even higher to it. In fact, this one, it has 5,702, and our data set consists of 5,733 uh, values. So basically, there are only 20 around. So probably that will be a good candidate for, uh, you know, for the X, okay, even this one. 5,113. But since we're going to assume that it's not in car, we're going to see how we can deal with this, you know, with this uh, phenomenon. So with the plot missing of the data explorers, we can get a list of the missingness. And as we can see, some of the stations are very, you know, that the data is missing. But why? What is the cause of that missingness? Can we pinpoint an event or can pinpoint something that happened? you know, during these days. And apparently, you know, that's the, that's the, you know, that that's the question, right? Uh, we did the M car, I did the M car, and of course the p-value is zero. <laughs> I mean, the, <laughs> definitely this is not a random. Uh, I did also the offset uh, plot, and I can see that most of the missing values are grouped within four to five stations, okay? All the instances are grouped within four to five stations. So if I can, try to research what happened in those dates on those stations. Maybe I can get a sense of why uh, those values are missing. Okay. So let's see what happened here. Uh, again, this is this is just the, you know, the, the last uh, section was just kind of the visualization of what was going on. Then we're going to see, you know, what's really going on here. So as you can see in this, is is a this is a heat map by by the way, uh, this is a heat map, and we see that these are the stations that have the missingness, right? You know, there's complete, but there's missing, and one of the things that's you know it's striking to the eye is this line, right? This line right here, that corresponds to a particular day. 
is, is I believe it's September, September 13th. What happened was that a big chunk of that line at that date was, you know, out of commission, okay? Apparently there was, you know, a, a big electrical failure. You know, I, I'm just, you know, try, trying to assume that maybe just an electrical failure or something at those stations where, you know, uh, the, the, tra the train couldn't stop there, okay? In other words, the train just kept going. Uh, and as you can see, apart from that, uh, we have a lot of missing values on those four to five stations, you know, that we get this big uh, percentage of missing values. So for example, there are nine stations, those are the conclusions, you know, this research, there are nine stations whose data are almost completely set for a single month gap, okay? The September month gap. Uh, these stations are all in the red line and occur during the time of the red line reconstruction project. Okay, so they were in, you know, in, in, in reconstruction that affected those stations north of uh, Chermac, uh, Ch Cermac, Chinatown for the 19th uh, Street station. So what are, you, are we going to do with, this, with these stations? Are we going to discard it or are we going to then try to, you know, uh, Input some some values. What do you think? I uh, remember that, that there's a date component here, so that should give you, uh, you know, kind of a kind of where you you should be looking, right? You can you can. Uh, develop a time series for each of the stations for the dates, and you will see that in that gap, there's going to be a missing value, right? In other words, zero, right? So what you can do is, we could do, because it's a time series, what you could do is fill the gaps, okay? Depending on the behavior of the September's, the September's before, because we have that data. So we can apply some imputation, you know, to that, to, th to those stations because it's only about that, and we know the cause in particular, it's not a random. The other ones, uh, we have to see, you know, how we can deal with them, because the severity of the missingness is really high, okay? Probably uh, some of them, you know, uh, even if we input them, for example, this one, this only has a, a little sliver of complete data, uh, probably, you know, it won't, it, won't be, uh, it won't be useful, okay? But in these ones, we have a mechanism, imputation, to then you know, try to deal with it, okay? Okay, another uh, situation about the missing values and why do we have to you know, delete them or impute them is that some of the models that we traditionally use for machine learning uh, they don't react too well with missing data. In other words, they give you errors, okay? Try a linear regression, logistic regression. Uh, uh, some, you know, uh, ra random for it, okay? KNN also. Uh, they don't react too well to missing value. In other words, you know, the, the data has to be set, has to be uh, free, of, free of them. And that's why uh, we, have to, we, have to, we have to do this exercise. But the author mentions that there are some models that are resistant. For example, naive base is resistant to that type of, you know, you can, you can model the data with the, those missing values. Also, decision trees based on CART, okay, on the CART uh, algorithm, also they are, you know, they, they, they can tolerate, <laughs> let's put it that way. They can tolerate at least a, a, a portion of the data uh, that is missing. But usually the algorithms that we're going to be working, uh, they don't. They, 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 uh, they expect the data set to be complete. Okay, so just keep that, just keep that in mind. Okay. And they mentioned a little bit of the deletion of data. They're not going, they're not going into deep because usually deletion of data. It's a case by case basis. Um, for example, in that, you know, in the example of the stations, probably 
the most uh, reasonable way to deal with you know this kind of missingness uh, will be to discard it. Okay, because uh, you know it's, it's so so much missing data that you can you you can impute. Maybe this one you know could be you know could could be impute definitively this one conservatory and the ones that have the line. Okay. But deletion of data shouldn't be the first thing that you do. You should research the data, how it was collected, uh, try to get an explanation, reasonable explanation of the of the missing data, and then uh, try to you know try, try to fill try to fill the gaps. Okay. Another way that you can deal with missing data is encoding uh, the missingness. Okay, and there's. Uh, there's an anecdote in the book that is about uh, a study about grants, okay? And in that collection of data, uh, some of the missing data that was reflected in the, you know, how, how, do, the, how, how do an organization, you know, uh, gives money to grants or, or, or the public sector? Uh, one of the things was that the author, for example, the one that he was, uh granting the money usually it, it was not it was not mentioned okay you know in other words it's kind of anonymous right so one of the things that they uh study it was that that missingness in terms of the authors that were known for the grants at the authors that were unknown it has some predictive uh, value why because there was a difference in the amount of money uh, of the grant between people that disclose their name and people that don't disclose their name. In other words, people that don't disclose their name usually uh, tend to give more. <laughs> okay, probably you know some some billionaire or something. Okay, that they don't want to you know be in the <laughs> in the headlines. Okay, so that's one thing that you can do, and it's very it's very useful because then what you're using is the missing data per se as an indicator instead of the values. Uh, you know that, that you can and you can combine them too, okay? To see you know if one is more has more predictive power than others. Okay, so in the imputation methods, uh, we talk about the traditional ones, you know, the the general ones, the median, the mode, the mean that we're not trying to use them, okay? Because they introduce bias to the data, and then there's the KNN. Uh, there's some tree-based methods bagging. Is in tidy models and also Miss Ranger. I use this, you know, quite quite a bit, and also linear methods. Okay, mice. So uh, I think we have a couple of minutes. So let me show you uh, kind of a demo. Okay, or how to how to use uh, uh, the the Miss Ranger, the Miss Ranger uh, mechanism, random forest with chain equations. So in this one, let me show you here. Uh, this one comes, this data set is called the Pima, Pima Indians Diabetes data set. It's a study that was done uh, with uh, females, okay, from the Pima uh, nation. And uh, they collected uh, different factors that can be attributed to diabetes, for example, the glucose level, uh, insulin, the BMI. So far, the age, if they were pregnant or not, and then uh, uh, they were they collected if the person was positive as a diabetes, uh, you know, patient or not. So one of the challenges here of this uh, data set is that, you know, when it comes as a raw data, and I can show you with the scheme very easily. Okay, you can see my console, right? Okay, let me go here. Okay. okay, so when it comes right off from the, you know, from, from, from the, you know, from the package, the package is called ML Bench. And as you can see with Skimmer, uh, there's no missing data. So you are saying, okay, Ricardo, what are you talking about? <laughs> Why are you presenting this as missing data? Well, if you go a little bit deeper, you will see that some of those. Uh, clinical diagnostics that they were taking you know, pertaining diabetes, like glucose, pressure, 
uh, the triceps, you know, skin, uh, you know, measurement and all that, uh, some of them are zero. Okay. And that, that cannot be, you know, the, the glucose, you have a glucose level, you know, no, no matter what, it cannot be zero. It's zero, you know, you are, you, you, you are out of this world. <laughs> okay. And this person were alive. <laughs> this person are, 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 were alive in the study. Uh, mass, for example, the mass, okay, to calculate the, 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 the BMI, et cetera. So some of these are missing values hidden in the data set. So one of the things that we have to do is that we have to convert those zeros on those particular variables, not on all of them, because for example, there's one that is pregnant. You don't want to change what happened with the pregnancy because probably that person, when it's set zero, for example, that means that she was not pregnant at the study. So you have to be careful how you're going to do this. But then you have to replace in those variables, those zeros with NAs, okay? And when you do that, you're going to get, you know, a couple of uh, missing values, okay? I'm calling it DFNA. Then let's do, you know, our, our visualizations that, you know, the, how, may, how many variables do, do we have? And right now, with that visualization of the this, that, okay? Uh, we can see that there's, you know, some correlation between insulin, triceps, uh, glucose level, et cetera, right? Okay. So th there's some relationship. So probably that, you know, is not going to be MCAR. So to give you, you know, the, the, you know, the short version of this story, let's do the MCAR test. And as, you know, as expected, is a very minuscule uh, p-value, so it's not. So one of the things that we can do is right off the bat impute those values, right, with the values that we 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 you know we we know. So one of the things that we can do is, uh, I did a mistake here, okay. And usually when you input the values, you should not use the target, uh, the, the 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 target uh, variable to it. Why? Because when you are running your model, you're assuming that your new data, you're not going to have the value. You're going to predict that value. So you have to impute, do your imputation as, uh, as, you know, as, uh, as much as possible to try to consider the new data that is coming, okay? So in this one, you know, mistakenly, I use the, <laughs> I use the target, but just to give an example of what, 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 you know, how, how, how does it work? So this is very simple. You just uh, apply the Miss Ranger command in that package, Miss Ranger, to the data set, okay? And you will have what is called a DF uh, imp, right? You know, a data set that has all those values that were NAs, you have some values in it, okay? And this is more or less, you know, how we would, you know, it, it will look. Okay, so how do we know if our imputation is, is good, right? In other words, that we're not alternating or distorting the, the distribution of the variables that we're imputing, right? Because you know, if we do the mean, if we do the median, if we do the mode, then you'll have this big spike and you know, it distorts, it, it creates a havoc. So one of the things that we can do is with a continuous variable, we can do density plots, right? Instead of uh, histograms, we can do a, a continuous line of the distribution of those variables. So we can compare the original set of that variable with the imputed uh, set and see you know, if there's you know, a significant difference, just visually, a significant difference on this. So this is the command, this is base R, okay? And for, for me, it's the most simple way to, <laughs> to, to do it, okay? So this is, the density plot, as you can see, uh, the black line is the original data without, of course, without the missing values. And the imputed is the red. And as you can see, you cannot distinguish it, right? You know, they're very close aligned. So that means that the input values are very true to the original distribution of your, of your missing variable. So in the, this case, that glucose is good, but caveat. I, I have an error there, 
okay, that I use the target. So what I would do is try to uh, get a target out of the imputed data set and then do it again and see, you know, if I can get, you know, the same, the same result. But the miss ranger is very good. And also in tidy models, uh, you can use KNN, you can use bagging, you know, to impute your, uh, and more, more your continuous variables because your categoricals, most of the time, what you can do is go to the uh, uh, data dictionary to see if there's any particular meaning to those values, or you can simply impute it as a null. Okay. And that would also help and on one introduce a, an undo bias to those variables. So the categoricals are not that complicated. It's the continuous ones that we have to watch out. Okay. So let me see if there's anything else. Okay. So the summary to wrap it up. Okay. So missing values are common occurrences in data in the real world. And unfortunately, most predictive models uh, don't handle uh, uh, data set with missing values. Uh, therefore, we have to address the problem prior to modeling. Uh, the missing data could occur at random, but it's very improbable. Okay. And you can use the test on the Nanyar uh, package, you know, to check it out. It, most of the time, it's going to be missing at random or missing not at random. And you can use visualization then to try to figure out what are the patterns of the missing values? How do those missing values relate to each other? And then try to figure out if there's an event or an external cause that is causing them. And that's it. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks very much. Okay. So uh, now you are next for seeing you. missing values. <laughs> <laughs> well, another great presentation, great chapter. Thank you. I had never heard of that <laughs> MCARD test method. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. Cool. In fact, it was developed by the same people that developed that, you know, mechanism. A uh, little and Ryan Rubin. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're from the statistical field. And they develop the naming, they develop everything. I mean, uh, you know, they have admirers and also they have detractors. For example, uh, the guy from the Bayesian, uh, Richard Macarita, he did test the, the naming, the naming of the, because it's confusing, you know, it's confusing. Sometimes, you know, because when, when, when you introduce random in a phrase, you have a, you have a picture that, okay, it's, it's random, right? You know, it's random, but here it's not. Missing a random is not a random. <laughs> it has a it has a pattern, right? The only one that is a random is M car. And that one, fortunately, it has a test. But unfortunately, usually the data sets don't, don't pass the test. <laughs> you know, usually the p-values are you know way, way down. So that there's some pattern to the missing. Yep. Interesting. Okay, great. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so next week uh, will be uh, empty <laughs> um, chapter, so working with profile data. So we are looking for someone who is uh, <laughs> keen to uh, be a presenter <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. and telling us about working with profile data, maybe. You can put me down if you'd like, Federica. That's great. Thank you. Uh -huh. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. I couldn't find that original document where we reserve our days, but yeah, I'll do it. Great. So we, we're done, we're all set, and uh, so we'll see each other next week. Thank you very much. Right. Have a great Bye. weekend, guys. Take care. Bye. Bye. <laughs>